Joining us now here in Washington, Democratic Majority Whip Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois. He's chairman of the Judiciary Committee and Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin. We have a lot to get to. We've got news on the economy, but I'm just curious, as chairman of the Judiciary Committee, your thoughts on uh, the verdicts this week, uh, seditious conspiracy, specifically for two members of the Oath Keepers, including the leader. This is a, an interesting, if not amazing, development <clears throat> that there was a conviction for a seditious conspiracy. Right. Uh, the Department of Justice has tried this before unsuccessfully, but the events of January 6, 2021 uh, were so clear, at least in, in terms of this particular defendant, uh, that the uh, jury came to that conclusion. And it, I'm sure it gives uh, some encouragement to the Department of Justice to pursue it. The January 6 committee in the House has laid the groundwork. We know the general story and generally what happened that day. But now they're zeroing on specific individuals who are guilty of uh, abusing law enforcement uh, and attacking our Capitol building. I'm sure Senator Baldwin and I will never forget that day. No. Uh, and no. This, this conviction is a step in the right direction to bring clarity to what happened. For sure. Joe? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Senator Baldwin, we let, let's talk about this historic week, uh, marriage equality now protected by statute. Um, and a, again, you look at the speed, uh, and I know it seemed like a long time for a lot of people, but just go back to 2004. You look at Republicans putting this on the ballot in 2004, thinking that it was going to going to drum up support for Republican candidates, bans. 2008, a lot of people saying, well, wait, how could California vote for uh, a ban on same-sex marriage, same time they elected Barack Obama? Uh, Joe Biden causing shockwaves when he talked about supporting marriage mm -hmm. equality inside the Obama White House. Ten years later, here we are, over 60 votes, a bipartisan vote. It's, that seems pretty remarkable, doesn't it? It is remarkable. Uh, for Wisconsin, the year that we uh, altered our state constitution was 2006, uh, defining marriage between a man and a woman. Um, you know, what's changed is that all of my colleagues, Democrat or Republican, have friends, family members, staff members who are uh, in uh, same-sex marriages who uh, they've seen have fought hard over many years to be able to protect their families, to access things as basic as uh, hospital visitation or being able to be uh, covered on their spouse's employer health insurance or um, uh, parental rights that flow with a marriage uh, certificate. And so all of my colleagues now know people, know families, and I think that changes everything. Hearts and minds, uh, uh, I would have loved to have seen more than uh, a dozen Republicans join, but this was uh, un uh, unthinkable just a decade ago. And that's what's changed. Uh, that and a U.S. Supreme Court case in June that, um, uh, that made people uh, appropriately consider uh, the fact that things they think are well settled maybe are not when half of America is set back to second class citizenship. Um, we recognize that maybe we shouldn't be as assured in cases like uh, Loving versus Virginia and Obergefell that those will be uh, the law of the land forever. So, uh, Senator Herman, want to jump to the rail strike uh, yes. or potential not. Uh, the House passed a bill uh, to try and avert a rail strike and to try and bring this in for a landing. But what's it going to take? Because we thought that this was resolved several weeks ago. Well, it's going to take bipartisan effort. I talked to Chuck Schumer this morning, so I'm in the Senate gym, and said, where are we? He said, we're waiting for the signal from the Republican side. They're ready to join us and move today. What are the issues? Well, the issues clearly are Republicans need to stand by us to move to this item of business so that we have that uh, first initial thing. And I think there will be at least two efforts to amend it I'm not sure either one will win 60 votes, but then we'll come to the key question, which was raised by Secretary Buttigieg earlier. Are we going to fix this problem this week? Or right. Are we going to run the risk of damaging our economy? We need bipartisanship more than ever.
All right. And uh, we have better than expected economic data to report, uh, easing fears of a recession. This comes as gas prices are falling and the Federal Reserve considers slowing its increase of interest rates. Updated numbers on last month's GDP report show that the economy grew at nearly 3 percent in the third quarter, which is higher than the preliminary data and well above what was forecasted. It was the first period of positive growth for the economy this year. Economists are forecasting more gains for this quarter, but the figures vary. Meanwhile, it's costing Americans less to fill up at the pump. Prices are now at the same level they were in February before Russia invaded Ukraine. According to the AAA, the nationwide average for a gallon of regular is now under $3.50, and price tracking company GasBuddy predicts it could drop below $3 by Christmas. That's a big difference. The Federal Reserve also gave an update yesterday on its plans to bring down inflation. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said smaller interest rate hikes are likely and could start later this month. Powell acknowledged that inflation is showing signs of slowing, but he needs to see more consistent evidence that it is. And isn't that a center where we're really Americans are really struggling? Because if it isn't inflation, it's shrinkflation. You can't get as much for your money. Yes. A uh, trip to the grocery store uh, is uh, often a painful experience it these is. days. And it's so immediate. Um, we uh, obviously were uh, noting that that was the chief concern of so many voters going into the midterms. It's something you see right away versus some of the other issues that are uh, a little more distant, a little less direct. Um, but it is uh, very important that we are heading in this direction, and uh, we need to encourage, uh, uh, especially through, uh, you know, the, the profits that we've seen some of these companies make, whether it's oil mm -hmm. companies or we were just talking about uh, the, averting a rail strike. And I think about how, uh, how well uh, the rail companies have done during the pandemic and during uh, this time of inflation at the same time that they've been really thinning, uh, thinning their staff and, and uh, really um, making, uh, making their workers uh, go through excruciating uh, uh, choices, including not having paid sick leave. So uh, we're trying to get it right in terms of the, uh, uh, the freight rail issue, mm -hmm. uh, avert a strike, but make sure workers get uh, at least seven days of paid leave and, uh, and uh, hold these corporations to account when they're, re re you know, bringing in uh, record profits at a time when we're all struggling to afford the, the cost. Gene Robinson. Um, that absolutely. I, I think that's, um, uh, you know, th th those economic numbers uh, actually were a surprise to me. They, they are, and yeah. I, I wonder if we're not actually going to pull off this soft landing that, uh, uh, that everybody said was so improbable. It looks like we might avert uh, any some sort of serious recession, which would be a real achievement by um, uh, Chairman Powell and and uh, primarily, but also the administration. Um, it's a question for for both of you, really. Um, bipartisanship. You mentioned bipartisanship. We need it this week to get through uh, on the on the possible rail strike. Um, have you seen any indication? from the Republican side of the aisle, which didn't do as well as, as you know, the party didn't do as well as expected in the election. Uh, has that chastened the Republican side at all? Has it made it more willing to, to cooperate in a bipartisan way? Well, if you want any indicator, luckily you have invited the senator to answer that question, <laughs> because when Senator Baldwin managed to pull off uh, with his Respect right. Marriage Act, mm -hmm. it was historic. And she did it, I'm going to praise you, don't mind. Uh, she did it by timing it properly and bringing the right people to the table. And the results were after the election. And so that's a good indicator. I want to hand it off to her to comment on that. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, back over this past two years, and there's been some remarkable achievements in a 50-50 Senate mm -hmm. with bipartisan support. The bipartisan infrastructure law right. is a great example. The Safer Communities law, which was the first uh, gun safety mm -hmm. legislation that we've seen in nearly uh, mm -hmm. three decades. And then the Respect for Marriage Act, obviously a joining of a, a dozen uh, Republicans along with the, uh, all the Democrats. Um, and I do see the prospect of getting more done. In fact,
fact, I think uh, if the midterms were about anything, uh, it was a rejection of extremism on the part of Republicans who were uh, uh, who were the, the election deniers and who were celebrating the Dobbs decision and other uh, other views that uh, our, our uh, American voters hold as extreme. And so I think there is a path for further uh, bipartisanship, um, and we need to seize it while it's there. <laughs> Let's go for it. Senator well, we'll Durbin and Tammy Baldwin, thank you both very much you. for dropping here in here in Washington. Thank you. It's so nice to be in Washington. Uh, we